last week in the EBA League Elias Cup. Incredible roll-off drama. Philadelphia wins on a strike. The knockout New York, the top seed. And Norm Duke calls his own number. And the Dallas Strikers stay alive for the league championship. Now it's out of the second set of quarterfinals. Chris Barnes leads the Adam Splitters against Sean Rash's Brooklyn Styles. While E.J. Tackett brings the muscle of Motown against Ryan Simonelli in the hometown Portland Lumberjacks. The setting? Some of the most fun you'll ever have on the PBA Tour. Portland, Maine for the PBA League Elias Cup quarterfinals. Welcome to Bayside Bowl, the MLB PBA League quarterfinals. The second series, the first series was amazing. This crowd was amazing a week ago, and they're back, crazier than ever. So here's what's going on. What happened first, the Hitman and the Strikers are meeting in May in the semifinals. Now we have the Adam Splitters against the Styles, and the Lumberjacks against the Muscle in our quarterfinals today. Welcome inside all the craziness with the Hall of Famer Randy Peterson and Kimberly Pressler. I'm Dave Lamont. Thank you very much for joining us. All right, last week was a blast. I'm hoping we can have another week like that. What do you expect out of this first matchup? A lot of the same. I mean, these are two great teams, starting with Brooklyn Styles. We've got two of the winningest players in the history of the sport on that team. Parker Bone III with 35 titles. He's going to anchor and leading off uh, just the winningest player in the history of the sport, Walter A. Williams Jr. For the Adams players, I think they picked up two really great acquisitions during this year's draft in Sean Maldonado and DJ Archer. But when you have manager Mark Baker and Chris Barnes, two of the best strategists in the game, I think that's the reason why they're the only team that's ever won this event multiple times. Well, let's go ahead and meet the Adam Splitters. We are the Adam Splitters. Go, go, go! Oh! The team that knows how to get it done. Oh, baby! Yeah. The two-time Elias Cup champions. Here comes Jesper. Oh! Drills it straight back. Adam Splitters. And now let's meet the starting five for the Silver Lake Adam Splitters. Leading off an 18-time PBA Tour champion in the exclusive Triple Crown Club from Double Oak, Texas, Chris Barnes. <laughs> in the number two position, a winner of seven PBA regional titles, third in last year's U.S. Open from Houston, Texas, Sean Maldonado. number three position he is a two-time PBA throw winner and a national college bowling champion from Friendswood Texas DJ Archer last year was the finest of his career with four TV finals and a win of the PBA Wolf Open from Tampa Florida Tom Doherty Man has five PBA Tour titles in last year, the youngest winner of the Fire Lake PBA Five Tournament of Champions. Five the highest average on tour last year from Gothenburg, Sweden, Jesper Svensson. <laughs> and managing the Adam Splitters is a four-time PBA champion and now one of the master teachers of the game from your Melinda, California, Mark Baker. Now let's meet the Brooklyn Styles. We are the Brooklyn Styles. And the roller gets it! Oh! Ball. Bringing some style to the PBA League. And he does it again! Yo, Brooklyn! 
He has 47 titles, eight majors, 10 titles on the PBA 50 Tour, ranked number two on the PBA Greatest Player List in 2009 from Oxford, Florida, Walter A. Williams, Jr. Yeah! He has won PBA title and nine regional championships. The man known as Flash is one of the South's all-time talents from Cocoa Beach, Florida, Jason Sterner. <laughs> He's the winner of the 2015 PBA Scorpion Championship in Reno and a regional champion as well from Charlestown, Rhode Island, John Van He. He has 11 tour titles and a two-time major champion, the first player in PBA history to roll a pair of televised 300s from Montgomery, Illinois, Sean Rash. His 35 PBA titles rank him number five all-time in tour history, voted the 10th greatest player of all time from Jackson, New Jersey, Parker Ball III. Managing the style is a genuine legend in bowling history. Inducted into the PBA Hall of Fame in 1982 with 14 titles, the 16th greatest player of all time, a genuine great, Johnny Petraglia! Yeah. We've met the players. Now we have one of the best of all time standing by with Kimberly Pressler, Chris Barnes. Kimberly. Thanks, guys. It looks like your team is ready to go over there. But, Barnes, you guys have won this twice, but last year you guys were taken out pretty early. But this year you're starting fresh. You have a little bit of a new lineup. How hard was it for you to let go one time MVP Dick Allen? Uh, I mean, he didn't come back around to us in the draft, and so that's part of the reason why that happened, obviously. But we got guys that all get along. Uh, our chem team chemistry is great. We have the best anchor man in the business with uh, with Jesper Svensson, and so uh, we've been having a great time so far. We're really looking forward to today. Feeling confident? Absolutely. All right. Well, good luck to you and the guys today. Guys, we're going to send it back to the booth. Kimberly, thank you very, very much. It's really interesting because it, Randy seems to me the leadoff and the anchor boys, we have superstars. I mean, absolute superstars. So we'll see. To me, it's what the guys in the middle are going to do that may determine all this. Uh, yeah, I think that's a great point. You're right. But what the interesting thing to me is that your anchor bowlers, one of them is throwing urethane, the other throwing reactive. They're both southpaws. Ah, so let's, while we think about that, we'll remind you we're going to Baker format here. You win both games, you advance. If we have a 1 1 split, we'll have a one ball roll off. Now, Baker. This simply means that the leadoff bowler, in this case, Chris Barnes, future Hall of Famer, will bowl the first and sixth frames. The number two bowler goes two and seven, three and eight, Don't four get quiet and nine. Now. And the anchor, five and ten. And Chris wants a little noise. And a bit light, he'll leave one behind. There's that spot you're talking about. A little wiggle spot down the lane, according to Tom Doherty and Chris Barnes on that shot. Remember our last telecast, we, we saw the right lane being a little bit tighter than the left. Come on. Well, he may look like he's getting up there in years with the glasses, but Chris Come Barnes on. got a lot of game left. Yeah. Time, Don't kid yeah. yourself. <laughs> Yeah, after he has gotten healthy, after he had some back issues and some yep. surgery, I, I agree with you. I, I don't think that would be great for bowling. Speaking of great for bowling, if we built a graphic of all of his accomplishments that would block the screen. The messengers listen when you win that many titles. <laughs> I always loved when Walter Ray makes telecast because his bio takes yeah, really, almost three long sheets. Long That's the Mark Roth theory. If I could play long enough, I'd try. Right. <laughs> and we're already going to give you our Barbasol close shave of the day, the timeless Walter Ray Williams. The only thing that's really changed over the years is swing looks like it's a little bit shorter, but how about this pit action? Okay, Sean Maldonado buries him. Two-hander from the right side. The Candyman. 
Candy Maldonado. Very nice. Yeah, I got that one. For you I baseball enthusiasts. Yes, sir. Now Jason Sterner has that one career championship. Oh, terrible break on a good looking shot. Jason Sterner's like the mini David Ozio. I don't think I've ever seen anyone practice and work on their game as much and as hard as Jason does. See, under the watchful eye of Johnny Petraglia there to the left of your screen. Oh. Oh, wait, whoa. I don't know whether he had a little issue. Yeah, he looks like he may have bumped the ball return so when we have a moment we see the pattern there for ourselves Randy on the blue what do you have here yeah 42 feet in length pretty good volume in the front part of the lane there's friction out and some oil in and when you have that for professionals at this level there's going to be a lot of striking going on and a miss spare he's a little bit shaken perhaps by his by the way missing a spare is not the worst thing you can do because Dallas missed spares and <laughs> yeah. routinely almost and ended up winning in a roll-up. Yeah. DJ Archer now up for the Adam Splitters. And Dallas also survived having a 299 thrown against them. Well, it's just gorgeous. They know what it is, baby. They know what it is, cuz. Let's go. Well, I'll tell you what. DJ Archer is one of the funnest guys I know out here. Next time, I'm gonna get another. Let him get going. Look at this react. How about that? And that's what the crowd wants here. Good stuff. Needless to say, when Pete Weber was bowling for New York, he, they were a perfect marriage. Ben Heaps. Oh, Solid. Jonathan Ben Heaps. A couple of players for the Adam Splitters that don't use their thumb. Here's one of them, Tom Doherty. Boy, that got there fast and left somehow a nine pin behind. Yeah, look left the whole way, too. And they're yelling, pick it up. It was a good thing that this one had some heat to it because it would have gone through the nose if not. Instead, it's just a nine pin. And that's smothered. It tried. I tried to hold it there. <laughs> I only missed my five. I mean, you got to hold it. takes care of business. All right, here he is, the 2016 PBA Tournament of Champions champion. Two-handed lefty from Sweden. Oh, yes. Nasty. He is in the best way possible. So now we have the other southpaw, Parker Bowden the third, getting up uh, on the left lane. And after a full game, these teams are going to flip-flop. And it's going to be interesting to see what happens to Parker's ball reaction on the right lane because Jesper's using Eurythin. Yeah, just a reminder, you finish out your game on the lane where you started. We're not switching sides until the game is over. You have to win two to move on. Speaking of timeless. Teams throwing haymakers early, just one pin separating them after five frames. The winner makes the semifinals of the PBA League Elias Cup. The LLB and PBA League Elias.
Cup quarterfinals are brought to you by L.L. Bean. Inspiring products designed for a reason. Start your next outdoor adventure at LLBean.com. By HotelPlanner.com. The best place to book hotel rooms. Best rooms, best rate, guaranteed. By the Grand Casino Hotel and Resort. The Oklahoma City area's premier casino resort experience. And by BowlingBall.com. Celebrating 20 years online. It's where bowlers go with free shipping on every item every day. Bit of the rugged coastline of the beautiful state of Maine. And I love the some of the old-fashioned big heads they have here. There's an old Parker bone shot. There's one about Chris Barnes that's floating around here. It's right uh, there. Oh, brother. Oh, there it is. <laughs> I believe he autographed it. You have to have a sense of humor about a <laughs> shot like that, and Chris does. <laughs> I hope he takes it home. Good stuff. All right, last time Barnes was up, he went two pin. Let's see what kind of adjustment he makes. Uh, that oh, seven's no. not going down. Well, he made the adjustment and made a great shot. And not only does he not get nine, he's got eight. One facing him right in the face. Look at that. Pocket seven ten seven wiggles. I always call this the worst break in our sport because 99 times out of 100, you come away with an open frame. He's going to go gunning for it and missed. And a four pin failed him there, not taking out the seven. Come on, Paul. Start us off, Maldo. Come on. Back on it. Here we go. So a big opening here for Walter Ray Williams Jr. Won over 100 titles combined in his career, so he's pretty familiar with how to handle a break in his favor working on a three bagger yes sir I get four there's a picture for you well in this old pattern Walter Ray can do what he does best he doesn't have to compete with the big high rep guys he only has to throw a couple of shots he could stay right of the head pin and guess what when he can do that he can still strike with the best of them Maldonado now Trying to start to come back for the Adam Splitters. Fist in the air, he knew it. The candy man. Man. He mixes up the pins and makes the world taste good. <laughs> nice, I like it. I love it. All right, Sterner coming off of an open frame where he whipped the 10 pin. Four bagger now for Brooklyn Styles. Archer. He struck in the third frame. This will be his last shot in the game. Unless there is a tie and he could be up for a roll off. No more half points. Oh man, that just tracked perfectly. Going coast to coast with a little loft. So now Van Heese, he had a beautiful shot in the third frame. What do you call that? The New England fescue on Jonathan's face? It's not quite a Portland main beard. No, no, no it's he's... it's pretty clean from, from up here. Oh, oh my no, heavens, that is awful. Oh. Oh, and every time I see one of them, I, I feel like just calling my therapist. I didn't want to say anything. I didn't want to be the one to bring it up. <laughs> Working on five in a row. That was the last thing that Brooklyn Styles wanted to see. You've got to be careful not to, when he doesn't, make a big error there. And he it up, it very calm. It was a great shot, bad result. Uh, Tom Doherty will try to make it three in a row for the Adams Splitters. Max score 235 for them. Oh, good one. 
Oof, six pins, just absolutely tomahawk the pin. So it goes to Sean Rash. Ten pin, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, they listen, Sean. Dirty. Pins don't always listen, but that time they did. Yeah, this was almost a double messenger. You got the six pin laying in the channel, kind of gives it a love tap, but you had a little insurance coming across. That was a big shot in the foundation frame for the style. Because I learned to get the six in the day. Can't be shut out now with that strike by Sean Rash. 247 max for Brooklyn Styles. Svensson for the Adam Splitters. Oof. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, one more, baby, one more. As the anchor man. Boy, the pins didn't stand a chance there. Throwing a urethane bowling ball, ladies and gentlemen. What's the edge there for him? Throwing urethane? Yeah. It's, that's what he does. That's his thing. When he can throw urethane, when I first saw him make a telecast last season, Players told me when he can throw urethane, he's unbeatable. Oh. And again. So the reason why he's throwing urethane is look at his reverie and his speed. It's much easier for him to control the reaction. He said one of the things he is working on is getting better at throwing reactive resin. But this guy, could beat you with a piece of charcoal if he's got good luck. I mean, <laughs> look at what he's doing to the pins with your thing. Well, then the question is, should he make a switch ever? Or would it depend he, on the he condition? He needs to learn how to throw reactive when you're th when he doesn't have a good look with your thing. Okay. Then he will be complete. Then he may never lose. <laughs> That's so filthy. Look. For a nanosecond. Oh my gosh! Yeah! For a nanosecond, there was a 710 there, and then blink, and it's gone. I mean, this is just disgusting. Look at that. I threw a messenger like that once, and then I woke up, and, uh, and, and when I woke up, there was a flat 10 standing. <laughs> All right, now here we go with Parker Bone. And seven pin is not going to behave. Game over. What a comeback from the Adam Splitters. Parker needed strike nine spare. I wonder if they're going to change the order. Parker's reaction not oh, looking good, and I don't think it's going to look better on the right lane. Yeah, they will be switching lanes for game two. We'll see if Johnny Petraglia has an idea if he wants to make a change or not. In the meantime, I'm going to bet everything I own that Jesper Svensson is going to be bowling anchor in game two. What a monster. So game one of the books here at Bayside Bowl is bowling in the LLB PBA League quarterfinals. The Adam Splitters take down the Styles, overcoming a little bit of a rough patch in the sixth frame of the missed 710. Time for our Ebonite flashback to the 2014 Elias Cup Finals. The Silver Lake Adam Splitters trail heading into the final match, but rallied to defeat the LAX. West Milan, Chris Barnes getting it done. Tommy Jones led. That's a great team. The Adam Splitters walking away with a second annual Elias Cup. We were at the Carlier in North Brunswick, New Jersey, the Brunswick Zone. Great spot. So standing by, Kimberly Pressler. Kimberly, what do you got? Thanks, guys. I'm with both of the managers here. So, Mark. You know what, your team really rallied after that uh, open with that pocket 7-10 split you guys had in the sixth. You've got to be proud and confident going into this next match. Yeah, we stole one there. No two ways about it. Uh, we wanted to get a chance to get to the 10th frame to get Jesper to do what he does. He came through for us. All right, well, good luck to you guys. So, Johnny, you know what, you guys, I thought you guys were going to have that win, but it just did not work out for you. Are there going to be any lineup changes? Uh, no, I'm leaving the lineup the same. Uh, the uh, solid eight uh, by Van Hees in the eighth frame was really the momentum changer. I think it really sparked them uh, to strike out and um, comes down to carry. 
Now, I saw you over there talking to your team. What did you tell them going into this next match? I let them know that they bowled a great game. They bowled a perfect game. And, uh, you know, Jason ran into the ball return, shooting the 10 pin, so he's a little leery. And it's only one game. Things like that happen. But if they bowl just as good this game, I'll be very happy. Well, you start fresh here. Good luck to you guys, guys. Kimberly, thank you. If Johnny Petraglia says you bowl well, I'm going to take that compliment. Yeah, no doubt. There, Mark oh, Baker, on. take a look at that stuff growing on his chin. Now, right I've here. known Mark right Baker for about 35 right years. Right it's the Let's first go. time I've ever seen him with facial hair. I asked him what was up. He said, hey, my eight-year-old son, Gage, loves it. I'm leaving it. All right, that's what matters. You do it for your kids sometimes. You see Mark's resume. Now uh, he uh, really one of the true teachers of the game. He's advised some of the best players in the world on how to improve their game. Right now, though, he's not helping those guys out at all. Game two coming up. Brooklyn must win to have a chance. Now you can outfit yourself like the pros with official PBA jerseys available exclusively at PBA.com. The jerseys are made from high-performance fabric and be customized for each person or your team. Click on the menu tab of the PBA.com homepage and select the Shop PBA link and get started. We are about to get started with game two. It's very simple. Walter Roy Williams Jr. leading things off for the Brooklyn Styles. If they cannot win this match and force the roll-off, they're eliminated. A little high. No, I thought that might have been a touch high. Nobody trips more four pins than Walter Ray. Okay. You don't, you don't win 46 times without the pins knowing who you are. That's a shot. <laughs> Just saying. All right, Chris Barnes, a little off in that first game, but it did not hurt the Adam splitters. Chris retaining that leadoff spot. I don't think either manager, Johnny Tragley, telling us no changes. I doubt Mark Baker made any. And that's through the nose, and unfortunately, that seven pin hung around. Now... We're talking about one of the game's greatest spare shooters and inventive shooters. So he is not out of the, the woods here to fire this off. 3-6-10 with the 7-end. No, end. very makeable. You know, and the nice part about it is if it is an open frame, it happens in the first frame. Right. feeling he was going to do that you know this all pattern really lends itself to that too because he knows he can get a little bit right it's going to come back that's exactly what he does he takes a little bit of hand out of it gets it right hooks back just enough to throw the three into the seven and that is your hammer tough spare replay my friend that right very good. yeah <laughs> i have my moments you do not very many of them Jason Sterner having to follow that. Oh, seven pin. Stubborn. Mm. I always wonder when somebody makes a dramatic shot like what Chris just did, if that affects the next player up. No, I don't think so. Uh, Barnes is going to come back with some intel. He's going to say, hey, I threw it bad. Don't go by that. Yeah. Or, hey, this lane is hooking more than we thought it was when we made the change. Simple spare for Sterner. I'd seen it in just a little, but I was just scared. Just like one. Just a little. Interesting note about that team. Uh, they're intact from last season. And every one of them, including the manager, on the same staff. All on Brunswick staff. John Maldonado, who was with Norm Duke's Dallas squad last year, and Norm wanted him back, lost him in the draft to these guys. Yeah, you know, like I said in the open, anytime you can pick up a Sean Maldonado, a DJ Archer, I mean, uh, talk about cherry picking. I mean, those are some, some pretty good picks to add to an, an already pretty, pretty formidable lineup. There's John Van Hees out of Rhode Island. Got a terrible break, Stone 8, in that last game. And this time, a lazy messenger pulled up short. Another good shot by John. Messenger kind of gets interrupted on the way over. Don't shoot the messenger. takes care of the leftovers. 
Hit the six pin, Walter. Hit the hey, six pin. You got nothing for me on that one? You know, I didn't know where to go with that. I was thinking about it. I was kind of hoping you'd add something to it. No, yeah, I, I was too. <laughs> You know, we'll get our timing yeah, down soon. Ten, fifteen more years, yeah. we'll have it nailed. <laughs> I want to see another strike by DJ Archer because I want to see another react. They're working on a strike. They can take the lead. Just to remind you that no half points for a tie game. That's why it's essential for Brooklyn to win here. And you stay on the same lane. No switching. You wanted it. I love you it. You got it. Man. The See? big fella could dance. See? Oh, that was great. Sean Rash wasting no time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, hey. Downplaying it. I like that strategy. Doesn't always downplay them. If you watch our telecast, you well know that. Well, he just, he just, you know, he said, hey, hey, you know, simmer down. Uh, just Give take it easy. One. Do our thing. Yes. I'm doing it. No, you don't. Very white. <laughs> Working in the back, yes, for Spencer. Just waiting to destroy more pins. He's just standing in the back chilling. He's a pretty chill guy. Kick save and a beauty on that 10. Yeah. Any dancing? Nope. Just a little, little high five. I think he was asked about that prior to his shot. That was her drink. That was her drink. How many teams that have you ever, well, last year too, when you have Walter Ray Williams as your leadoff and this guy as your anchor? Oh, yeah. Five pins spun around a bit. Down it goes. 91 titles between the two of them. Brooklyn team kind of quieter than the Adam splitters. Well, they're behind. They have to win this game to, to advance. And here comes a big shot now. Let's see what kind of reaction he Jesper has on this left lane. He absolutely destroyed the right lane. Four in a row. <laughs> I wonder if you get bored of that. I wouldn't. The Adam Splitters riding the momentum of that big pickup by Chris Barnes, and then four straight strikes. Getting closer to dancing into the semifinals. <laughs> Fog rolling in off the lighthouse. Just outside the Portland, Maine area. What a really gorgeous state this is. Now, Brooklyn Styles trying to get rolling here. And Andy mentioned this earlier, our Columbia fun fact of the eight teams in the LLB PBA League, this is the only team in Brooklyn Styles to return the same five from last year. And then, you know, you, you retain a couple, but you have to draft the rest. You retain three when you draft two. And it is sometimes difficult to keep a team together. Come on, Styles working off a double, but their opponent working off four in a row. And no, says the seventh pin. What? Well, he said trip four. Are you kidding me? I know. He's just as surprised as you were. Damn, how dare you? Millennial pins, man. What are you going to do? Yeah, they really needed that hit there, too, because uh, they're down. They got to win this game. And they could have used the three bagger. Adam Splitters are working on spare four bagger. Could increase the lead right here with a strike by Barney. Which would be his first of the day. Well, it's kind of funny, though, that his nickname's Barney and he's wearing a purple shirt. Ah, there you go. There's a big move. Well, by far his best shot of the day. Premature runoff. Man. 
a we premature run out. We saw it happen with Jason Del Monte in right? 299. Right, he put both hands at 299. Watch yeah. it, it's a little early here. Wait, 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 up. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. It was a great shot. He made a nice move off of the split in the first. But that was big because that could have been five in a row. A little bit of hope for the Styles. Well, they got to hope that they strike. And these guys don't. See the max score. Here's the Styles. The best they can do is 248. Jason Sterner, nine spare in the second frame. Now up in the seventh in this Baker format. And that looks good. There's Johnny Petraglia, the Hall of Famer, the left-hander with a timeless form. Look it up. If you've never seen him bowl, you need to. Johnny Petraglia signed me my first ever staff contract way back in the day. We've been friends a long time. I think the greatest part about Johnny is just going to dinner with him and listening to the stories. Oh, not go. Not six pin. Uh-oh. Yep, you said strike and don't strike is uh -oh. the one way that Brooklyn can get back in here. This could get a little interesting here if... Uh, Brooklyn can double up. Van Hees is on deck for the Styles. Uh oh. Here we go. Now it gets really interesting. I remind you that the Adam Splitters survived to 7 10 earlier, but take a look at the big board. Van Hees with a strike, they take the lead. He's due because he's had some brutal luck. Yeah, I mean, 10-pin, uh, solid eight, strike. He's throwing it really good so far in this competition. Let's see what he does here. Working on a strike. Wait a minute. Yeah, I thought so. Let's go! <laughs> you know, all the bad luck he's had, he deserves that. Check out the action here, folks. DJ Archer, dancing DJ so far today. Look out. Uh -oh. Against Brooklyn, he went Brooklyn. Big yes. trouble now. Suddenly the air has just gone out of this balloon here for the Adam Splitters. They had Chris Barnes, who should have made it five strikes in a row and got an awful break on a ringing 10. And then a missed single pin by Maldonado. This is covered easily. Not bad. Sean Rash with a big chance. Now you see the maximums have changed completely, at least for the Adams players. Today. Big shot. Ooh, 7-10 busted up. Big break. Well, the string ends, and with a spare here, I believe we are tied. And by the way, we talked about this a week ago. We might have a roll-off for a roll-off. This game is tied. They'll have a roll-off. If the Adam Splitters win, we're finito. If the Styles win, we'll have a roll-off. So, so basically what you're saying is we could have a double roll-off. Yes. All right. We're headed there because we're even. Talk about the emotional roller coaster. Up, you're down, you're up, you're down. Now we're tied. All right, Doherty sets up the 10th frame right here. If he strikes, nothing the Brooklyn Styles can do to shut out the Adam Splitters. Big shot right here. Gotta have it. He does. Now, uh, you set up the 10th frame for Jesper Svensson. Could you, could you ask for anything more as a bowling fan? Well, you've got Parker Bowen the third. Let's go five, yeah. And Jesper Svensson coming at you from the left side. One traditional, one new wave. Traditional will start first. Bam. 
That's one. Yeah, great shot. Made a living playing the outside part of the lane. I don't know if there's been a, a more prolific player from out. Earl Anthony has more titles. Southpaw Earl Anthony played a lot of different places on the lane. But I'll tell you what, from out, this guy still gets it done. Needs it. Does it oh. get in a ringer on the seven? It was a good looking shot. Ooh. All right, big spare coming up now because if he makes it, count will stay the same. Yes, girl, need the first hit in the tenth to win. If Jesper goes spare strike, we have a tie. And we get into that thing you were talking about with the <laughs> roll off for a roll off to have another roll off. All right, he covers it. First hit from the freak of nature. Yes, for Svensson, and they will advance. He has been perfect, I believe, today. Has not missed. Struck out in the last game to lock things down and, for the Adam Splitters. And, and not just striking. I mean, like striking with serious authority. knock Gosh. each other out of the game. All right, he's got to spare it, and then he's got to strike. And we get our roll-off to the roll-off. And we get exactly what you've been begging for all day. Anything less than a strike leads us to one roll-off. Because they'll be tied. Yes. Spare strike to tie game two. Now, first things first. Beautiful shot. Come on, And after all that advice and all that chatter, he does stand alone at the line. A chance to send this to a roll-off where the Adam Splitters could win on the next ball. If he does not strike, the Styles will win the game and we'll have a roll off to determine the quarterfinal winner. Look how quiet it got. He does not strike. Wow. So we now have one less roll off. Right down the line, one at a time. Parker first. So there you have it. Parker Bone and Jesper Svensson begin the roll off to decide the match. If they tie, the managers will pick again. You hear Johnny Petraglia was sort of mapping that out a little bit as he was going along. See Chuck Gardner in there off to the left offering a little advice. Well, like any great superstar, Jesper wants the ball here in the fourth quarter. So Jesper will go first. Would you rather go first or second in the situation? First, absolutely first. Put the pressure on your opponent. He did. Whoa. He's an anchor man. He invented the wheel. Wow. Yeah, he won it. He's right there. Yeah, you're next. Hey, Chris. Well, Doherty will be next if they need him. How about that? Have you ever seen no. that much emotion from Jesper Svensson? I have not. That's that's how much this team event means to these players. Uh, hang on a second. It's not over yet. The strike, and we go to another round. And he doesn't get it. The Adam Splitters have won. On the big hit by Jesper Svensson, the Adam Splitters have moved on to the semifinals and will take on either Motown or Portland. Like, oh, no, no, don't do that to me. Don't do that to me. Wow, what a finish so far. 
We've had three quarterfinal matches. They all go to roll-offs. And Jesper Svensson lets loose. Pumping fists and winning. The L.L. Bean PBA League Elias Cup quarterfinals are brought to you by The Main Thing Is You, original. Get inspired at MainQuarterly.com. By Lee Auto Malls, Maine's number one auto dealer. With 18 locations statewide, see why more Mainers are saying Lee is for me. By Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And by LiveAndWorkInMaine.com. Browse and apply for jobs at Maine employers today. Get started at LiveAndWorkInMaine.com. Well, we have been so fortunate to have exciting quarterfinals both last week and also today. With the Adam Splitter surviving a one-ball roll-off, getting the clutch strike from Jesper Svensson. They'll take on either Portland or Motown next Sunday on ESPN. But Randy, Portland's got a tall order here. They really do. I mean, even though they're, they're the crowd favorite, the hometown team, they're spearheaded by Big West Malat and Ryan Simonelli. The question is, will they have enough mojo to take down Motown? And talk about muscle. I mean, this team is stacked. Spearheaded by EJ Tackett, the reigning player of the year. You go down the list, it's the reigning U.S. Open champ in Frankie Lavoie. And then, well, how about Dick Allen, who was the MVP of the league two seasons ago? This team is stacked. Let's meet him right now. We are the Motown Muscle. The strongest team in the league. Racing through the Elias Cup. Motown Muscle. And now it's time to make the lineup for the Motown Muscle. As part of his winning the U.S. Open last year, he rolled a 300 on live television. He also won the PBA Shark Championship from Quebec City, Quebec, Canada. Francois Lavoie. In the number two position, three times on tour, he's claimed the top spot, including last month in South Florida at the Extra Frame Reality Check Classic. He's also won right here in Portland from Mesa, Arizona, Josh Blencher. Number one, baby. Two years ago, he won the Mark Roth MVP award in the 2015 PBA League as a member of the Silver Lake Adam Splitters, three-time PBA champion from Columbia, South Carolina, Dick Allen. The Chris Shanko Player of the Year started the year off right by winning both the PBA Japan Invitational and the Fire Lake PBA Tournament of Champions from Huntington, Indiana, E.J. Tackett. And last year he became the youngest major championship winner in PBA history in 19 years and 39 days when he won the USBC Masters from Austin, Texas, Anthony Simonson. And the Motown manager, the USBC Hall of Famer, owner of 13 titles, who won over a million dollars during a distinguished career. From Keller, Texas, Dale Ballard Jr. And now it's time to meet the opposition, the Portland Lumberjacks. We're the Lumberjacks. We're the hometown team. Yeah! Ready to chop down the competition. Yeah! Lumberjacks! Leading off for the Lumberjacks, 21 titles on the women's tour, eight majors including last year's U.S. Women's Open. From Chicktawaga, New York, Liz Judson. He's a 10-time regional champion, also owns the 2015 PBA Wolf Open title. His father was an eight-time tour champion. His flair on and off the lanes is unmatched. From Taylorsville, North Carolina, Kyle Cruz. In the 3-2-2, 
three position. This man has a tour title, and it was a biggie in the 2003 USBC Masters when he defeated Walter Ray Williams Jr. from Roseburg, Oregon, Brian Smith. <laughs> Seven-time champion on the tour, including last year's extra frame main shootout in Portland. From Cheektowaga, New York, Ryan Simonelli! <laughs> a ten-time PBA Tour champion, a major champion, and most recently in Portland, he defeated E.J. Tackett and Jason Balmani to once again be King of the Hill from Fulkerville, Texas, West Malone. And the manager of the Lumberjacks is one of the game's most popular and respected figures, an outstanding amateur bowler, and played a little football at Penn State. He is Tim Mack. So who will be the fourth team to make it to the semifinals, Motown or Portland? We're going to find out together. We are about to begin that last quarterfinal between the Muscle and the Lumberjacks here in Portland, Maine. they got a hometown team to pull for here. Let's get to the lane side and Kimberly Pressler. Thank you, guys. So, you know what? I am joined by two of these guys right here. We're going to start with Dick Allen. So, Dick, you are new to the Motown Muscle this season. How motivated are you to become MVP again and help your guys uh, get that win? I mean, you know, MVP is unimportant. I just want to be the team player, you know, help my guys get there. I'm bringing the experience to the team for, for, for the Elias Cup. I mean, that's what it's all about. You just come out, have fun, make good shots, and, and hopefully that carries us the rest of the way. It's all about the team. Thanks so much, and good luck to you. Roll board! So, Kyle, you know what? He's new to the Motown Muscle, but you are new to the PBA League experience, and what better team to be on than the hometown team? Can you put the words, the experience that you're having right here with this amazing crowd? Yeah, I'm just blessed with the opportunity to be representing the hometown team. Portland, the crowd here is electric, ecstatic, one of a kind. Uh, it just fuels us to even want to strike even more. I'm excited to be here, love everything about it. Portland's coming for the Elias Cup, and it starts right now. And I see that your dad is here as well. How cool is it to have him in the audience? I love seeing him in the crowd. You know, he loves it just as much as everybody else does. Dressed him up in a turkey suit, so we better throw a few turkeys for him. I love it. I love it. All right, guys, we're going to send it back to the booth. Kimberly, thank you very much. And there's Dad right there. Rocking the cup and rocking the turkey suit. The great guppy troop. So the format here is the Baker, the classic Baker format. It's a team format. So the leadoff bowlers here will bowl the first and sixth frames. The number two bowler will bowl second and seven then three and eight four and nine your anchors the fifth and the tenth frame they're going to stay on these lanes so the lane that liz johnson is going to bowl on will be portland's lane the entire game they'll switch for game two you win two games you're the fourth semifinalist if we're at one one we'll have a one ball roll off and we've had a roll off in every quarterfinal so far and liz johnson starts us off and leaves a fool Winner of eight majors, Liz Johnson. She's really good at keeping the ball in play and piping it up the lane into the one-three pocket. And in that awful break at the World Bowling Tour finals when she had it on her racket and left a 7-10 to lose to Danielle McEwen. She needed a mark. Yep, that was it. Got a mark there. It was a little, a little extra time on that one. You know, we have seen some fairly makeable spares missed, too, so you really have to concentrate in these conditions. Here's Frankie Lavoie. Lofts it in there. Pure power from the Canadian. 
reigning U.S. Open champion with a 300 game on TV. Got that one on Sean Maldonado. Here's Kyle Troop. Dressed down for the occasion, I see. Dressed down, but hair up. <laughs> Although, then again, if you look at the slacks, that's much more Troop. There's a little rep rate going on there on a stone nine. Two-handed style, but but a little bit more traditional. His body's a lot, a lot more square at the foul line. Walks a little bit straighter. If you watched him walk through the crowd, he took a couple of last picks just to make sure the throw was fully blown out for this. He's cool with it. Got it. He's got to be happy that first shot's out of the way, man. First time in this environment and atmosphere for him. The familiar face of Josh Blanchard. Yeah, this is one of the prettiest strokes in our sport. Take a look at Josh Blanchard. Boom, kicks aside that 10. You know, it's, it, it's really unfair to the rest of the team when we mentioned, or when I mentioned EJ Tackett, Dick Allen, and Frankie Lavoie and leave out Simonson and Josh Blanchard. That's how stacked that team is. Brian Smith has that one championship. It was a major. Yeah, I, and they were the sixth seed, by the way. Yeah. He's behind the 2-8, but we've had an eighth seed win already. Philadelphia defeating the New York City WTT Kingpin, so seeding doesn't always matter. Yeah, I think he could throw the seeding out the window, but I like I like Brian sporting the kind of lumberjack look. You know, he's got the beard. He is an uh, he is from Oregon. We know that they have lumberjacks there. I think he fits in perfect with this team. He actually could play in a Metallica cover band with that goatee. You know that too. James Hetfield. Yeah, yeah. that too. A little bit of a reason. Got a hook. It does. I'll tell you what, he's he's a in pretty good shape for a 43 year old. He's still got a lot of game and he's proven over the years how valuable he is in this team competition. He was a returning Robert. team member. He was drafted this year. They didn't retain him, but he did come back. He was drafted. A lot of facial hair in this competition thus far. <laughs> See Richie Allen. I know he goes by Dick now, but it's always going to be Richie to me. Well, he's got good kismet in this building. Listen, this guy pretty much owns this building and has for some time. A couple of years ago, Mark Baker made him the anchor and put him in that position. And all he did was get up and strike to win. He is really, really good and real solid in this building. And Ryan Simonelli is pretty solid everywhere. What I thought was interesting about their lineup though, Ryan Simonelli fourth, Malat fifth. Not taking anything away from Big West. Don't get me wrong. But remember our last match, we saw two lefties anchored. Yeah. Because there's very little traffic on that side, right? Well, same goes for Ryan Simonelli. He's on an island all, all to himself out there. Well, here's the player of the year from last year who's not anchoring, and he goes just a hair high and leaves the four behind. So what do you think about the decision made by Dell Ballard Jr. to put EJ in the four spot and Anthony Simonson in five. There had to be a reason. I mean, it, it, it all comes down to ball reaction and whose ball reaction looks the best. There's nobody better at looking at ball motion on the PBA tour than that man, Dell Ballard. Yeah, good point. Yeah, he is a major guru for these players. <laughs> How many times hey. have we seen somebody go for a quick consult with Dell and come back and throw on strikes? Yeah, I mean, He's, uh, you know, let's not forget he's a Hall of Famer. He's won three majors. I mean, the guy knows bowling, and he watches ball motion for a living. So Simonson's ball reaction's got to be better than E.J. Tackett's, and that's why he's in the five hole. Big West leaves the 2-8 back. And everybody on the Lumberjack struggling on the right lane, which has been the tighter of the two, struggling to get the ball up to the pocket. they got one strike and they've fallen behind quickly. Look at the blue oil dye going around Wes's gold bowling ball. They have not made any big mistakes. 
But they haven't struck. But once. So here's a two-hander, Anthony Simonson. Well, if there's one thing we've learned throughout the course of this year's event, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. Messenger is going to fall flat. Kind of back there rocking a combination Ted Nugent, David Lee Roth look there. As you see, that messenger really wasn't even that close. Heck yeah, onto the right there. 80s look. Yeah, I like it. Good follow through by Simonson to make sure that 10 pin took its medicine. The Liberty's really run off and hid in this opening match between the Muscle and the Lumberjacks. The winner of it is the fourth and final semifinalist. We are through five in this opening match between the Lumberjacks and the Muscle, and it's time now for a little Randy Peterson Trek Tech Talk. Well, remember on our last show, we talked about the fall through of Sam Cooley. He's a right-hander. Well, here it is for Ryan Simonelli. He's a left-hander. Very similar with that follow-through going to the opposite side of the head there that Ryan Simonelli just kind of swipes it to the right. But it's because, again, his body is so open. That's actually a pretty straight follow-through. You know, the originator of that big movement back in the day was Don Johnson. Oh, yeah. Boy, did his follow-through go in to out big time. So the leadoff bowlers come back to bowl their second frame, which in this case is the sixth. Liz Johnson will get it going here for the Lumberjack team. It's only had one strike in the first five. They get two and six. Liz overpowers them. Talk about someone who trusts their game. Well, she keeps it pretty simple. It's straight from anywhere on the lane. Yep. Here's a nut, really, real unassuming game. Doesn't look like a whole lot, does it? Until the ball hits the pin. At that time, a quiet 10 for Lavoie. The only player in history to bowl a 300 game during the televised finals of the United States Open. We already have Philadelphia against Dallas in one semifinal. The Adam splitters are standing by watching this to see who they'll face in the next semifinal. And you, again, we've seen this happen a lot over two shows. Right. Single pin misses, but they haven't been fatal. Well, all, all of a sudden, the Lumberjacks are right back in. Yep. Kyle Troop with a strike here. They're going to take the lead. And remember what I said earlier. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. They started off with three in a row, and now all of a sudden, it's nine spare, nine spare open. Kyle Troop looking for the first double for the Lumberjacks. Came up light, and they brought the crowd back in it, too. You could feel this place get a little hot. Here's Tim Mack, the manager. Big shout-out for Tim Mack and his family. Our condolences. He lost his father a little over, well, it was about a couple weeks ago. And um, I'm really close with Tim and knew his dad, and I, I, I knew how devastating it was for him. But... Uh, just want to send out our well wishes and we go, you Timmy, right here. Love, love you, man. Still, huh? hey. Just a little yeah. Tim, another one of those guys that has a, is a tour whisperer, has a lot to say and uh, to players during their rounds, during their games. Very well respected. Oh, oh just absolute cool. raw power. Josh Blanchard, a former winner here back in 2015, won the PBA Extra Frame Main Shootout, non-televised event. Well, Brian Smith. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, he said he had to get a little bit softer after his first shot went light. Nice adjustment and great execution there by Brian Smith. 
Nick Allen with a strike in the third frame. Now coming up in the eighth for his final shot of the game. You have to win two here, and so far we've gone to a roll-off every time in these quarterfinals. Allen, oh, bad break. Looked like he got it in the oil, and the ball pushed just a little bit longer down the lane, and left. that's when you're going to leave a bad, ringing 10. Doesn't take much, just a little bit different yeah. angle into the pins. And that's exactly what happened there, six around the 10. That was a big shot too, because that increases the lead now. Tim Mack and the Lumberjacks can get right back in it. My bad, no, my bad, hold me up, hold me up. Good shot. Yeah, right I'm um, sorry, Dave, go, go ahead. ahead. No, I was gonna say, you mentioned Blanchard winning in 2015. Here's the guy you won in 2016. Yeah. The Tim Mack blow up. Great shot here by the Ryan Express. And now that sets up the 10th frame for them. They can strike out and shut out Motown Muscle. Yeah. Come on, guys. That's player of the year form right there. Keeps a minute. But right now it's all Big West Malak. Three in the 10th. And they will take game one. Last time up, he went lightly to the 2 8. The king of the hill, two times for Wes. Beat Packard and Melmo here in Portland to do it. Oh, yes. That's a class shot. Tim Mack made a nice run last year during the main shootout. I believe he made it to the final four. But a great shot there by Big Wes. How about two great shots by Big Wes? Yes. Yes. It's amazing how quickly the, the match flip flops. You know, they get off to a red hot start. The Lumberjacks have one strike oh, through five frames, and then all of a sudden, they're in a position now to win. The strike will take care of it. The chant, the big nasty. <laughs> We're in this position only because of what you just did. Was that even halfway down the lane before he said that? Oh, that was a big nasty right there. Look at that. Barely left his hand. The king got down and dirty in the tenth. PBA's extra frame is your home for exclusive live coverage. PBA, PBA 50, and the BWBA Tours. So May 1st through the 3rd, Extra Frame features live coverage of the PBA 50 Tour from Mooresville, North Carolina. And on May 5th and 6th, it's live coverage of the PWBA Tour from Sacramento, California. Don't miss this pro bowling doubleheader. Click on the Extra Frame link in the menu section of PBA.com. Sign up for a yearly, monthly, or three-day subscription. For Randy Peterson and Kimberly Pressler, I'm Dave Lamont, along with all of our new friends here in Portland, Maine at Bayside Bowl. Game one with Wes Malott striking out in incredible style, pushing the Lumberjacks past the muscle. The king of the hill is standing by with Kimberly right now. Thanks, Dave. It definitely was incredible. So, Wes, you know, your team had a bit of an issue putting together some strikes at the beginning of the last match, but you did not have any issues with those last three, and this crowd was on their feet. That last ball barely left your hands. You knew it was a strike, huh? Yeah, we definitely struggled the first part of the match, but, uh, you know, I kept telling the guys, we're going to win it because we know the right lane, and that's why we picked it first. We know it's a little trickier, a little tighter down lane. 
And, uh, you know, these guys set it up for me to finish for them. We talked about a move. I moved one right there in the 10th frame, committed to it, and made three great shots. All righty. Well, you heard it. Guys, I'm going to send it back up to you. Guys. Really, thank you very much. Thank you, Wes. And now he's going to get ready for one more game. If the Lumberjacks win it, there'll be no muscle in the semifinals. Game two about to begin, the LLB PBA League, the final quarterfinal game. If Motown wins it, we'll have a one ball roll off to determine the semifinalist. However, if the LLB Portland Lumberjacks take it, they will make it. Frankie LeBois to start for Motown. I can't take my eyes off those turkeys. Well, maybe that will help you take your eyes off seeing a perfect strike. I'm thinking there could be like a nice corporate crossover here with like maybe Butterball or something. Okay, you never know. You know? These turkeys sponsored by these turkeys here. Liz Johnson, who had a spare and a strike in the leadoff position. Now they're over on the left lane. More friction on the left lane. See how it works out for him. Well, no trouble for Liz. Now, remember when we saw the Adam splitters go to that, that, that lane? First shot out of the gate for Chris Barnes. He goes through the nose, he goes 3 6 9 10. They figured it out real quick. I think that lane hooks a little bit more than they think it does. You start on the right lane, right lane gets pretty tight. You move over to left, you go, okay, I'm going to make a couple board move. I think you got to move more than that. Well, Wes Malott referred to the right lane as trickier. Soft 10. Yeah, and there's the uh, slicker of the two lanes. You see it in that reaction. The ball's a little soft entering the pocket. This is called the flat 10, where the six just lays into the, the right gutter right there. Just not enough entry angle to get it to pop. I really love how stable his upper body is when he goes to the foul line. I think it's one of the strongest parts of his game. All right. Home up. So Josh Blanchard covers the spare. And here's Kyle Troop. And I thought, I thought Malad also made a great point when he talked with Kimberly about how the crowd's back in this and they're firmly behind the home team. That's through the nose. And he got a trip forward. A little tight going up the lane. He's going to have to increase his angle as he takes the pick out. But a nice break here. Trip of the 4 7 10 late. Great advice by Tim Mack. He said that shot was left. Dick Allen, not troubled at all by what happened to, to the Lumberjacks opening with a double. You know what else I really love about doing this event? No matter how loud I get, the bowlers can't hear me. <laughs> we are in the uh, cone of silence over here. Strike from Smith. Great shot by B. Not even a question. B. Definitely. Smith. Definitely. Just like you did over there. It's commitment and go ahead and go. So EJ Tackett. Tim Mack, you know, with Tim's football background, it's not surprising that he's actively coaching these guys. Having played football at Penn State, I think he brings that mentality to this. Well, it's his personality, too. J. Tackett. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Nine pins just on, plastered. Guys. You don't see J. Tackett go very straight very often, but he is on that right lane. Oh, high five to the turkey. Now Simonelli. Big shot here. It'd be interesting to see what his ball reaction is like on the left lane. That looks pretty good. Take that, baby. Take it, baby. And not so fast, my friend. That labored just a little bit. Okay. Here's our proprietor, by the way, the handsome man in the tux, Charlie Mitchell. This is his house. 
We hope to leave it in good condition when we leave. <laughs> I saw Charlie's outfit this morning and I said, only one thing came to my mind. Bond. James Bond. <laughs> Charlie Mitchell's the best, man. Simonson. Anthony yet, Simonson. We're not done yet. Don't yell at, him, at the hometown crowd. They're pulling for the other guys. All right, here's West Milan. Working on a five bagger. Let's see what Big West Milan's ball reactions like on this lane. More friction. Remember, you got to move left, feet, and target. And like Tim Mack said, commit. Oh my goodness! Backside four trip. Oh my! A couple of trip fours, one from a lot, one for Kyle True. They are perfect. Through five. Can the Lumberjacks pull it off? Stay with us. All right, let's get the next set of frames as we recycle and go back to the top of the order for the muscle and the Lumberjacks. Motown down 20. And that's because the Lumberjacks haven't missed on their first go around. Now here comes Francois Lavoie. I just had a thought. Wait for it. I have been. <laughs> Lavoie leaves one behind. He's just left it sitting there, partner. Sorry about that. No, no. Hey, you know what? I deserved it. I'm going to give you that one. But All right. anyway, what's your thought? Not yet. Oh. Not yet. Oh, I like Awful. the suspense. Awful break for Frankie Lavoie as the ball goes right by the nine pin as they were working on a three bagger. Yeah, and right now, Spares just started cutting it against this Portland team. You've got an amazingly talented muscle squad here. Yeah. Uh, he really good. did. So, last five frames, right? Uh, Troop, trip four. Simonelli switched the rack. Malak, trip four. Kind of like the Lumberjacks just chopping wood. Well, it began with a flush strike from Liz Johnson here. In the first frame, she's in the sixth. Come on, Liz. Look out. Uh -oh. Yeah, that's the first mistake we've seen from Portland in this game. Put it in there, girl. Put it in there. Going through the nose. Yeah, not a good shot there at all for Liz. She, that, that was just the full yank. That looked like wood chopping right through the heart of the pins that time. Not, you know, and as a player, you, you just hate throwing that shot, especially with the momentum they had. I'm not sure about that. And then follow it up with an open. Yeah, that, girl. nothing more frustrating. You got you. You got you. Well, Del Ballard senses an opportunity here. So does Josh Blanchard. Something so, something so minor like that can turn around and cause you the, cost you the entire match. The only good news for them is that Motown didn't strike in the sixth. They didn't in the seventh either. Remember last time up, he left a soft 10, and this one just doesn't even read the lane. Remember that Wes Malott said in his interview, the right lane's tricky. And they set it up perfect for him, and they got away with a win on that right lane, so they go over to the left lane with nothing but confidence, and this is what we're seeing. Right lane is snug, left lane has got some friction and return. Even that took its time. How that one didn't hook. I was nice to it and everything. I was nice to it. I was waiting for it to shake. So you can hear the crowd getting into the true chance for Kyle. Let's see if he increases his angle a little bit on this next shot. He did. Did he jack up the speed on that one too? Yeah, it looked a little firm. Now, worst thing you can do is go back to back open frames. So this is very choppable, easy to chop the two off the five. But he wanted to increase the angle, which he did. But that ball never read either. Despair here, all is forgiven. Look out! Okay. Oh. Didn't put it in the pocket. Instead, he took it from the side. What do you think? 
So the Lumberjacks up eight. Dick Allen. He struck in the third. You've got Tackett and Simonson behind you here, so Motown in a good spot. If they can get one here. Oh, they do. Pretty good shot from now, a typical okay. house bowler. Let's go. Backs against the wall. <laughs> which is his nickname, which is actually the initials Backs are tattooed from here on, out. on one of his arms. It's a great story behind that THB, but uh, I promise you folks, uh, Richie Allen is anything but a typical house bowler. Big shot here now for Brian Smith. Look out. Yeah. Went Brooklyn, actually. So what has happened? First five, you mentioned a couple of strikes were a little borderline, but they did go. Now they're struggling to find a pocket. Well, there's friction on that lane. It looks like they're afraid to throw it to the right. See, that has zero angle. You heard Tim Mack just say it's zero angle to the right. So what's the adjustment here? The adjustment is throw it to the right, but make sure your speed's right to where the ball will come off of the spot and hook back never to the got, pocket. Right. Something Wes Malott's yeah. really good at. Elbow My question is, what's Sorry. Simonelli going to do? Remember the last time up? Real light tickler. Last time up for EJ Tackett. No tickling, just pure power. Yeah, and this sets it up for, that, for these guys. And I like Simonson's look on the right lane. Big shot here. Yeah, I got a trip on the four. Let's go! Let's go! Standing down the home crowd there with that. Well, he kind of looked over and said, hey, you know, you guys can trip four, so can we. This sets up the 10th frame for them. They can shoot 248. The best, the Lumberjacks can shoot 245. But Simonson's look on the right lane is better. Oh, yeah, wow, dude, that's how you do it. Well, he shaped that one beautifully. Got a little bit softer. Way to go. That was a class shot from a Make class play. Make them work. It, it's all, it's all Make Simonson them work. now. You know, Simonson on the left lane where there was more friction was leaving flat tens. His last shot on the right lane was perfect. Well, we've got one ball roll-offs in every quarterfinal so far to determine our winner. Will it happen again here? Oh, wow. We will if the muscle wins this game, and then the captains will pick one. One more and count, and it'll be all tied up. Again, you look back at how quickly things changed, how they started with the front five, did the Lumberjacks, and now they're looking at a possible loss that big open frame in the sixth by liz johnson when she went through the nose and failed to convert the 310 the big difference now gotta have it taking a big nasty left turn that was a few boards to the right you saw how it shaped off of that tighter lane higher rep rate perfect eight were better and we're rolling off and would you just consider Simonson your guy here? On the right lane all day long. The question is, if you're the Lumberjacks, who do you put out there? Big Wes? I, I would, I, or do you go with Simone, Simonelli? I think Simonelli's got a really, really good idea of what to do now. Well, Malat struck in the fifth. But it was a trip four. Good point. That's Simon, that's it. Baby. That's We're going we to a roll off. Here, <laughs> Boy, you don't often see him get in somebody's face, but I think that was all good nature. We ain't done yet. No, you're not. And I don't think he's done yet either. I think he's got one more ball left. Four pin stone nine. See that? He moved on it. Look, Tim Mack just said, hey, did you move on it? He shook his head yes. As we take a look. At Simonson getting in the face of the locals. So, the decision for Dell Ballard Jr. He does have the player of the year and a two time titleist this year on the bench as well, EJ Tackett. Yeah, it's not like Dell's got a shortage of people to choose from. Nope. But I would stay, I, I, I would dance with the one you brought. I would stay with Simonson right now, first ball. And then the issue is you go lefty or righty here. 
if you're Tim Mack at Portland. Well, this next shot by Wes Malott's going to say it. It's going to tell a lot. He's going to move again off of the nine pin. We'll see what kind of shape and what kind of result he gets. Got a little faster with it. Mm. What do you do now? Simonelli or the big guy? Remember who struck out in the 10th frame to win game one? You then yeah, and then we see if we don't have to wonder who it's going to be. Well, that was a hard choice, yeah. Dell. <laughs> Dell didn't waste West. any time with that. And it is going to be Malat. Yeah. And Tim wants to go first. You're next. And Simonelli is next if he needs it. It's a one ball roll off. If they tie, we move on. We're not shooting spares here. You know, this just isn't for the other four team members and the manager. This is for the city. You know, this is this is a big shot for West Malat. And keeping the Portland Lumberjacks in this competition. Some of the stuffing did go out of this building the last few frames with the Portland team slipping and losing. So he can bring them right back and make it a very difficult shot for Simonson. Got off to such a good start. Went to commercial and lost everything. Oh my. Didn't like the feel. You either gotta go or no go. The chant got they started into, getting quiet. The bigger, chant bigger. got into his head. Dead focus here. Let's go. Commit to it. And once again, Tim reminding him to commit to it. Tim would make a good PGA Tour caddy. Yeah. Oh, he committed. Beautiful. Very simple. If Anthony Simonson does not strike, Portland advances to the semifinals. I like it now because Simonelli's your next guy. But you brought the building back in. Simonson must strike. After Simonson would be Simonelli. Who do you put up for Motown? You go, Dick, you go Dick Allen. Oh, because he owns this building. Good point. I would think Tackett, but you're right. Dick Allen's a great choice if they need him. Got real quiet. And a ringer. A perfect shot almost, and Portland will advance. The king of the hill has done it for the Lumberjacks. Remember all that stuff I talked about earlier about Simonelli bullying anchor? Yeah, 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 yeah forget, forget all that. Okay, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll erase that from yeah. the uh, memory banks and from the tape. Again, every quarterfinal came down to the one ball roll off. And this time, it's the Portland Lumberjacks managed by Tim Mack, and there's the man of the hour, Wes Malat. Who nailed down that first game with three strikes in the tenth, and then nails down the deciding point with that strike. West was absolutely perfect in the tenth frame for this team. This is a great shot by Simonson. He gets it into the oil a little bit, though. Remember, we've seen it before. That ball lays in the oil, comes in a little late, big ring and ten, and they're done. Big West's shot. Couldn't have been more perfect. The L.L. Bean PBA League Elias Cup quarterfinals are brought to you by Barbasol. New Barbasol premium disposable razors with close shave technology. America's leader for a close, comfortable shave. By Cisco, the global leader in food service, bringing more to the table and our local community since 1969. By the United States Bowling Congress, creating competitive opportunities at all levels as we build a future for the sport. Visit bowl.com for more. And by Maine Media Collective, the state's largest, most connected media company. It's time for our Geico recap, Randy. What memorable shot making we had today. Well, it's a good thing this building has insurance because Jesper Svensson <laughs> destroyed 30 pins in the 10th frame of that first game. Parker still had a chance for the win, though. He needed a double, leaves that soft seven. Adam Splitters take game one. In game two, it's Jesper once again in a roll off. He gets the 10. Parker leaves the seven. Adam Splitters move on. And then in the last match, Lumberjacks and Motown Muscle. Big West Malott throws three in the 10th. Turns around before the ball's halfway down the lane. 
to capture game one. Game two, they start off big, first five, and then all of a sudden they run into trouble. This one would go to a roll off first. Big West steps up. He gets all 10 in the pit. Simonson, he needs 10 to keep going. Instead, it's a big ringing 10. Lumberjacks move on. So here are the brackets. We've had, and by the way, every one of those quarterfinals went to that one ball roll off to determine our winners. The Dallas Strikers and the Philadelphia Hitman in one semifinal. And the Silver Lake Adam Splitters take on the Portland Lumberjacks in the other semifinal. And on May 14th, we'll determine our 2017 Elias Cup champion. Now, standing by the victorious Portland side with Kimberly. What an exciting finish to this match. Tim, you've got to be proud of your team. But you guys started off strong in this one, and then it started to get a little iffy there for you. What changed for you? I just think it was a little bit of a lane transition, and, you know, we, we got out to that lead in that second game, and, and, and you want to try to stay on the gas, and, um, you know, you gotta, you got to credit Motown. They, 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 they kept the pressure on us, and, um, but, uh, you know, we, we had a chance at the end there, and we went to a roll-off, and the big fella brought us home. Can't be more proud of the big fella and our team. Yeah, the team did amazing. Let's talk to the big fella now with, with the little mascot here, West, who is not your son, but he is Charlie and Kayleen's son. He is absolutely adorable. But Wes, you know, when we spoke earlier, you said that if your team needed you, you were going to come through, and you certainly did that in the roll-off. What does it mean to you to come through for the entire city of Portland? Well, you heard these guys get loud. Uh, I, uh, I think West is our good luck charm here, our mascot. He's awesome, my little buddy, and uh, I'm glad he's, he's <laughs> he wants to have a little fun. But uh, again, just to be in that situation is what we all dream of. Uh, I'm just fortunate enough these guys have my back and to be able to to get up and step up and, and do that it means the world to me. Um, as I said the other night at the King of Bowling, uh, you know that might have not have meant as much to, to Belmo and and EJ, but it meant the world to me to be able to put myself against some of the best bowlers in the world to step up and make some shots and win that was was very key and, and I could feed off of it as confidence and here we are today. And here you are today and now you know what you get to go up against your former team um, the Adam Splitters. What do you think about that? I uh, just another uh, another step along the way to the title. All right well congratulations to you guys go ahead and celebrate you have earned it. A wild ride for the Lumberjacks. It looked great for them. It looked bad for them. Ultimately, it looked great for them. So you want to watch the semifinals? Hope you do. Next Sunday at 1 o'clock, you'll see all four quarterfinalists that survived in the PBA League semifinals for the Elias Cup. Tremendous excitement here in Portland, as always. You can't beat this audience anywhere, and every match goes down to the last shot. Jesper Svensson was just evil to the pins here. The crowd enjoyed the turkeys. And the bowlers provided the excitement. We'll see you next week from Portland, Maine. The Elias Cup semifinals. We can't wait.